Today we'll be reading Deuteronomy 7, 17 to 23. Devarim 7, 17 to 23. Kitomar biv vavcha rabim hagoyim ha ele mimeni echa uchal lehorisham. Lo tira mehem, zachar tizkor et asher asa aronai elohecha la faro'o ulochol mitzrayim. Hamasot hagdolot asher ra'u enecha, veha otot veha moftim veha yad hachazaka veha zroa hanetuya asher hotziyacha aronai elohecha. Kenya ase aronai elohecha lachol ha'amim. Asher ata yare mi pneihem, vegam et hatsir a yishalach aronai elohecha bam, ad avod ha nisharim veha nistarim mi panecha. Lo ta arots mi pneihem, ki aronai elohecha bekir becha el gadol venora, venashal aronai elohecha et agoim ha el mi panecha meat meat. לא תוכל כלותם מהר, פן תרבה עליך חיית השדה, ונדתם ארוני אלוהיך לפניך, והמם נהומה גדולה עד הישם דם. And in English, suppose you say in your heart, these nations are more numerous than I. How can I drive them out? You are not to be afraid of them. You are to be sure to remember what Adonai your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and wonders, and the mighty hand and outstretched arm by which Adonai your God brought you out. So will Adonai your God do to all the peoples you fear. Moreover, Adonai your God will send the hornet against them until the survivors and those in hiding perish before you. You should not be terrified of them, since Adonai your God is in your midst, a great and awesome God. Adonai your God will drive away those nations before you, little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them all at once, or else the beasts of the field will not multiply on you. But Adonai your God will give them over to you, and he will throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. Say the blessing for the Brit Chadasha. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher her alanu rachamim veshua, venatan lanu brit chadasha, baruch ata adonai, noten hamashiach. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who showed us mercy in Yeshua and gave us a new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Messiah. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see everyone this morning. Just a few verses earlier, God made it clear to the Israelites that... Um, if they would just listen to his judgments and follow his commandments and keep, and keep what he says, he'll, he'll bless them, he'll guard them, he'll keep them, and the Lord will multiply them. But there will also be barriers that they'll need to conquer, enemies that are greater than themselves and stronger than they. But God says, don't be afraid of them. But remember what I did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. Over and over again throughout Scripture, God keeps going back to Egypt. Egypt was one of the, maybe the landmark event in Jewish history, in salvation history. Uh, and uh, we know the Passover harkens back to Egypt, a beautiful picture of what, what uh, Yeshua 
did for us on the cross uh, as the sacrifice, sacrifice lamb. So we're always going back to Egypt, looking back at Egypt. Don't, re- don't forget Egypt over and over again. And I think what God is saying is don't forget what I've done in your life. Don't forget the miracles I've done. Don't forget that you are a miracle, that at one point you didn't exist. You were a figment in your parents' imagination, and, and, and you came to life. God said he would do the same to their enemies that he did to Pharaoh and Egypt. Just don't forget. Verse 21 in there in Deuteronomy 7 says, You shall not dread them, for the Lord your God is in your midst a great and awesome God. Don't dread them, for the Lord will do to to them what he did to the Egyptians. He's a great and awesome God. We We have to remember how incredible God is. He's awesome. He's infinite, infinitely wise, infinitely gracious, infinitely sweet and loving and kind. Verse 22, and the Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly, lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. But the Lord your God shall deliver them before you and and will throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. This is what I want to focus on today. You see, if, if the Lord drives these nations out too quickly, the scripture says the wild beast will grow too quickly and be a problem for you. These nations that are there are keeping a certain balance of nature, if you will, uh, for their safety and for their provision. The wild beast, they're probably eating the wild beasts. They're, they're killing the wild beasts. They're using them for food, for sustenance, to make tents and for clothing and all these things. And if, if, if the Lord drives the nations out too quickly, the wild beasts will be a problem. This reminds me of that passage in Exodus, I think it's 13, where God knew as the Israelites came out of Egypt, if they saw the Philistines, they'd be afraid they, they wouldn't be ready for war, so instead of taking them this short route up to the north by the Mediterranean where the Philistines lived, he took them south through the Red Sea, and they ended up wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, partially because of unbelief. But he knew they couldn't handle that, so he took them another way. God knows what's best for us. We think we know what's best for us, but God knows better. So often, you know, we we want it now, uh, but we may not be ready for that thing now. I may covet my neighbor's car uh, and want one for myself, you know, but, but that may not be God's will for me. I'm sure you can all think of examples for yourselves. 1 Timothy 6, 6 says, Godliness is a means of great gain when accompanied with contentment. It's a good one. We, we think it best to get relief from our challenges sooner than later. Right? I mean, who, who wants trials anyway? Who, who, who wants tribulation? But God, in his wisdom, will use obstacles as kind of like a placeholder while his people get stronger and better equipped for the road ahead. God knows the Israelites need to grow in their new role and in their new space. Therefore, he gives them victories little by little as opposed to all at once. They may not appreciate it at the moment, but God is blessing them at a pace they can manage so they won't get overwhelmed and ultimately lose ground. Seems like less, but it's really more. This is often how God works in and through us, little by little. I want it now is really childish. There was some serious lesson that I needed to learn about authority before God would let me move to Washington and become the rabbi at Congregation Emmaus many years ago. The mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So we need to make our plans, 
but we need to leave room for God to direct. This is how we grow spiritually, little by little, so that the wild beasts, the obstacles of life, don't overwhelm us and don't consume us. One step at a time, with persistence and consistency, gets us to the goal to be complete and content in God, lacking in nothing. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. My prayer would be this. Lord, give us your supernatural patience to endure in the evil day and be content with your provision, not getting ahead of you, not lacking, lagging behind, but trusting you and walking with you step by step, day by day. Yeshua said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So what do we have to fear? What obstacles do we have to fear? What trials are going to get us down? Where if God is for us, who can be against us? He will take care of us, little by little. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, Shabbat. Thank you for a day that we can put aside, look to you, focus on your goodness. May your joy well up inside of us today. And may we not be anxious for anything, but with thanksgiving and prayer and, and earnest prayer, I pray that we would let our request be, be made known to you so that your peace that goes beyond our understanding with God, our hearts and our minds in Messiah Yeshua. Not anxious, even if things seem to be going too slowly. 